uh, in, it's, it's very interesting, as I sit and I listen to the other speakers, in regard to similarities between Bartonellosis and Borreliosis. And I think one of the challenges we're going to all face is separating out what is Bartonellosis, what is Borreliosis, and how many of the patients out there actually have both of these infections. And I think I'll be able to convince you that we have some sorting out to do in, in just a little bit. The other aspect that makes these alpha proteobacteria very unique is their ability to invade many cells within the body. And as we'll see in a cartoon just in just a minute from Christoph Diejo from Switzerland, uh, these bacteria initially pen penetrate the skin, inner dendritic cells, but once they get into the body, they actually localize to the endothelial cells, then invade in cycles, as Joe talked about in regard to Borrelia, um, the erythrocytes, and they can circulate within the body in erythrocytes, monocytes, uh, and at least when Kempf published the study a few years ago, these are the only bacteria that were known to infect CD34 progenitor cells within the bone marrow, which I think may have some clinical importance in the context of uh, bone marrow disease. So I, I put this slide together about a year ago because I, th I think it reflects the state of Bartonellosis. And I had to take some solace from the comment from Aristotle that it's the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. Because as, as a veterinary researcher looking at Bartonella, my concern is could there be a hidden day modern epidemic? And this is perhaps very pertinent to those of you in Europe realizing that when the bubonic plague occurred in the 1400s, which is credited with killing about a third of the European population. We didn't know that it was a bacterial infection. We didn't know that it was being transmitted by a vector. And we didn't know that there was an animal reservoir in the context of rats that were responsible for this. People actually thought that it was divine intervention that had brought this plague along. And so as, as I've thought about Bartonellosis, my initial question was, well, how in the world can you hide an epidemic from epidemiologists, microbiologists, and clinicians? And honestly, when I first made this slide, I per said, perhaps it's very hard to do that. And you'll see I changed that to perhaps it's not so hard. Essentially, you start with an unknown genus of bacteria. And if it were not for the AIDS epidemic, I would not be giving this lecture today, as we'll see in a minute. Secondly, as Stanley Falco, the past president of the American Society of Microbiology stated, Bartonella is a stealth bacteria. It is capable of flying under the radar and is very difficult to detect in patients, as you'll see in, in just a little bit. From the standpoint of a veterinarian, I'm very concerned because every day we're finding that the wildlife reservoir for these bacteria is absolutely tremendous. Essentially, squirrels, kangaroos, and many, many other animals, cats, dogs, deer, all are running around in the world with their own Bartonella species that are vector transmitted and maintained in an enzoiotic cycle, but also some of these, as you'll see in a minute, make the jump out of that animal to infect a dog or a human and cause disease. And then what's becoming more disconcerting is the fact that we're finding an increasing number of vectors that are competent for transmitting these bacteria, and we'll look into that as well. So as I alluded to, what, what happened um, in the mid to late 1980s is that physicians saw bacillary angiomatosis and peliosis hepatis in AIDS patients. They then, using silver stains that Alan mentioned yesterday, were actually able to see these bacteria and large numbers of bacteria in the tissues of these lesions but microbiologists were not able to grow them. David Relman, uh, a physician at Stanford, used PCR targeting the 16S ribosome RNA gene, and all of a sudden, these bacteria, based on DNA sequence, became either Bartonella quintana, the trench fever agent, which you're very familiar with, or a new bacteria, Bartonella henselae, which becomes the cat scratch disease agent. 